Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Uh, we're gonna do a little black powder shooting. I've had a bunch of people ask when we was gonna get the old flint lock out that I built. Uh, this is the Tennessee Valley Arms Pull Boy Kit. I built it uh, last year. It's a 36 caliber. So we've got some round balls, some 3F powder. We're gonna do some shooting. But to start this video off, I wanted y'all to see this shirt that I'm wearing. My Uncle Sasquatch Outdoors, he's a lot of muzzle loading and uh, relics of old of the, of the Civil War era and the mountain men days, a lot of the black powder and muzzle loading. Y'all, he's got a great YouTube channel. I have been watching him for a long time. He sent me this shirt. Uncle Sasquatch, I really appreciate it. I wanted y'all to get a real good look at this shirt. I'll get up here close where you can see it. It says... Uncle Sasquatch Outdoors, keep your powder dry. Y'all, this is a nice shirt, good quality shirt. Uh, he designed the logo and all, and I really like that tomahawk. Uh, but anyway, back to this. Turn the camera just a little bit where I can be to one side. Uh, this is a beaver bag that I made. This is a beaver pelt that I tanned, and I used scraps of the beaver to make my strap, and I folded this over to somewhat pad it a little bit, because sometimes you put squirrels in there, it gets a little heavy. Uh, now, um, just to tell you a little bit about what I'm using, I, I throw a little modern mixed in with a little old. I just make things work. This powder horn, I did build this powder horn. Uh, I did not do a video on it. I toted it some last year. It's got a piece of antler stuck in it. It's filled with 3F powder. Uh, it is off of an old cow. Uh, it's got some Osage orange or Bodoc. We call it Bodoc down here in the south. To cap this in and got it sealed. And it has worked really good. It's not huge. It's not as big as the powder horn that's got my uh, 2F powder in it. So I didn't, I have not ordered me yet a priming powder to keep my 4F powder in. So y'all, what I come up with, this is an ink pen that I hollowed out. I pull the tip out of it. It holds enough powder I can sprinkle in the pan. I can plug it back with my little stick and it stays stuck in here with my knife. Now I have a video on making this knife. I have a video on making some others with wood handles similar. This is just a small knife that I keep, stays on my on my strap. It is affixed to that strap now. And this powder will go right down in here beside it. So anyway, and then I have got some 36 caliber round balls that I have, oh, uh, I cast these last year. I have got some denim, pieces of denim that I am using for patching. And there's the, the round balls we're gonna shoot. Now I've got one that I just pulled out here that should have been cold. I don't know how that slipped by me, but look at that ball. I cast these, we're gonna coil that and it'll get melted back down. So we're gonna lay it to the side over there. But anyway, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna load this up. Now I am lubing with some patch lube that i made uh it is made from some uh it's got some beeswax with deer tallow uh, so i'm i've made this rendered animal fats i don't know exactly what all i mixed in there when i made that i, I think i did a video on that but uh I'll go ahead and lube that patch up. Now, I wanted to tell y'all, I shot this gun right here the other day. I don't know if y'all could see that target right about, I think it's right there somewhere. I'm looking in the camera. Yeah, it's right there. Um, That's about 50 yards. Oh, I know for this little rifle, that may, and for my eyes and open sights, that might be pushing it, but the closer I can get it at 50 yards or that distance, I'll, the better off I'll be because then if I shoot 20 yards, you know, it's, I know I'm, I want to get where I can shoot it about 50 yards. I'm not scared to shoot at a squirrel that far. Oh, uh, so let's get the gun loaded up now. Uncle Sasquatch has got some great videos on loading and how to load. Y'all, the first time I shot this rifle, <laughs> I shot this thing and the next time I loaded, I started my ball and I did not ram it home. 
So this is a learning curve for me or was. I have gotten a lot better at it. But the first thing I do, because obviously I shot it the other day, I already done this. But hanging up these old sheds, this hung out here in my building. You want to make sure dirt daubers didn't find its way. Some of y'all keeping all your stuff in the house. This is, I've got a gun rack out here. All my muzzle loaders stay in my pottery shed, which it's pretty airtight. But dirt daubers get in there occasionally and get in stuff. So make sure your barrel's clear. So I can hear air coming out down there, so I know that that is clear. Oh, uh, got a vent pick that I'll pick that hole right there. So I made me a little old vent pick out of a piece of wire. I can stick that in there and make sure that hole's clear. Because we, you know, we target shooting here today. We want to make sure we get, and especially we video and we don't want to make no mess up here. Now, Uncle Sasquatch made me this powder measure. This is a 30 caliber. We're going to shoot a couple times. So I'm going to start. This one is about 25 grains. I'm going to start with it because that is what I wound up shooting. And I, I, I'm not sure which one's going to work better for me. So I've, I'm working up loads. So I take my powder. Get my, and this is Go X. I... I have not, sh I, I've been stingy with my powder now, y'all. I ain't gonna lie about it, not none. I ain't get out here and do a whole bunch of shooting because I didn't have but one can of the three elf. I have several cans of the two elf. Now I, I tap this a little bit, make sure that it's settled. All right, and then up here, Pour that powder right on off down in the barrel. Okay. Now we're going to get that lubed patch. Get it put up there. Now I've got my ball starter out here somewhere. i got to put my hand, make sure we got a good round ball. I, I don't know how I managed to let that other one. And y'all, I went ahead and cut my patches in squares because it just made it easier for me and i made that ball starter it's got a bullet casing on the end and that that helped me out and i don't try to claim to be the fastest loader in town but we want to make sure you take your time and, and get it right so make sure and i don't reach way up i just do short strokes with that See that rod don't bounce. And I made this rod. That is a privet shaft rod. I heat straightened it and everything. I had a dial that came with this and y'all, I broke it right straight. All right. So I'm going to shoot across my beaver bag today. I don't know if that's the best thing to do. So I'm going to just lay my stuff to the side. And uh, we have got to prime the pan here. So I know y'all want to look here. Ooh. And this is 4F Go X in there. And I tap this to make sure that kind of levels out. And I'm already at half cock. So I'm gonna leave y'all back here behind me. And like I said, I shot this the other day. So there's one bullet hole already in there and I left it because I wanna show y'all where it hit on that first shot the other day. Don't know who I'm gonna hit today. I probably, I might not even hit the paper. <laughs> Hopefully we do. I'm gonna set y'all up over where you can get a good look at me shoot. I had to go get a thing there to put my gun up on because it wouldn't, oh. Uh, wasn't quite high enough where I had it. All right. <clears throat> Let's go down there and look, see what we hit. All right. I don't know, y'all can't even see way back over there, can you? Now nah, you can see a little bit. This is where I shot the other day. I shot it one time. 
we're going to number that shot number one. Let me turn y'all up. I know y'all want to look me in the face. This right here is what we do shot. Shot number two. All right. We want to shoot one more shot, see where it groups. And then we're going to change powder measures. And we're going to go up a few grains of powder and shoot like three more shots. And see where we get in the best grouping with this. Uh, because y'all, I have not shot this rifle a lot on a bench. Uh, we got it built last year and we shot it enough to think all oh, we can hit and we went hunting with it. And uh, I still, from time to time, get some pan flash. Like, it'll flash a pan and won't shoot. And I don't I don't have everything worked out. So, I'm learning. So, uh, Uncle Sasquatch, when you watch this video, and I know you will, I want you to help me out on why I'm having some pan flash along. If it's, you know, lubing my barrel too much or I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, I, and I notice if I, after I load it, usually if I have a pan flash and I take the vent pick and pick it out, the vent will appear clear. Uh, when I poke it through there, I don't feel like nothing's in there, but it'll usually go off after that. So maybe I just need to pick it every time. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we're going to shoot it a few more times and see what we come up with. Oh, I better stick my sharp in my pocket. I'll be run off. Make sure I always blow in it make sure that's clear oh we're gonna load one more again with my old powder measure i built this one out of an antler myself but it is kind of big and long so i just i try to pull make sure i plug that all right, let's pour this off. I do a lot better with stuff when I'm calm and not all in no worked up rush and hurry. And so far, y'all, this denim is working good for me. Uh, I don't know the precise thickness. I did mic it last year when I was experimenting with some different stuff. And I did find out that this was working for me better than some of the thinner stuff. So I can't remember now what else. I had used some actual like bed sheet like material. Since that, that patch there is a little long, we're gonna I'm gonna trim it a little bit with my patch knife. It's a little short to just really I just wanna make sure I ain't got no bunch of And I did not swab that barrel, y'all. This is, I, I cleaned it after I shot it the other day, but these two shots, it hadn't been swabbed in between them. So that might make a difference, I don't know. But now when I am squirrel hunting, I ain't. I don't do no bunch of cleaning in if I'm shooting it a good bit. So after this shot, these three, I'll probably swab it out or something. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead this time and pick this right off the bat. That was an old fish hook I in had broke off. I think y'all seen me break that fish hook off in a video. You wanna know the truth? On the ground. All right. I got my old blanket that I made what I'm shooting on.
Let's go down there and take a look, see. All right, that ain't too bad. This is hole number three. So you know what? According to my hand, you can tell how big that is. You know, the length of my finger apart, basically, on the longest part. So what we're going to do, we got these circled. Let me write a three. It put me a little three by it so I know. We're going to use a, the, the powder measure Uncle Sasquatch sent me. It's about five grains more of powder. Now, when you're shooting low calibers like that, to me, that seems like a good bit difference. So if it opens up big, we'll know, you know, to back back down if it, whatever. Uh, and I've got a brass measure where I can measure the grains out if we want to adjust in between there. And, uh, and you can adjust those powder measures by putting some epoxy or something in the bottom if you want to, to, to fill in, you know. So, uh, let's see what happens. Shoot it different powder. Now, we're going to swab the barrel out, too. All right, I got a piece of old t-shirt material right here. What I'm going to, boy, that strung all out everywhere there. I better put that over that light. That's big enough to choke the lawnmower down. Oh. I'm going to lay it on this table and cut it, but I can use up some of these old t-shirts y'all been seeing me try to wear around here for quite a while. Uh, now that I got folks sending me some nice t-shirts, and then I finally bought some of my own, I can, uh, I can quit wearing that old out junk. And I don't know right how how big I need to cut these little patch pieces. But I tell you one thing, y'all watch this. It's now. I mean you barely move it and it'll cut. I like that now. That's the best one I ever made. Alright, let me move my chair back. We're going to swab this barrel out. Now, I ain't no professional at none of this black powder. If y'all ain't figured that out by now. So, I do not know the best way to do everything. So, I generally do it the way I like to do it. But I do search for little instructions on this stuff because I don't know. Like I said, I'm I'm trying to. Some of y'all give me some tips on the best, you know, if I need to swab it between every shot. or I mean, if you off in the woods of hunting, swabbing between every shot gets to be a chore, you know. But now I'm, I'm more about accuracy than I am anything because it don't do no good to shoot at an animal. Oh, Lord. We done lost our... I'm going to have to go get my other little old deal there. Hang on, I'll show you what I made. All right. What I done is I got me a fish hook. See that bar? I straightened that fish hook out. Because, y'all, this ain't the first time I've had one of them little pieces of cloth or a paper towel or whatever I was cleaning with come off in there. And that fish hook, pull it out. See there? Now, what I've done is I cut that a little too short. Like that old man, as he was working on his house, he was out there sawing logs. He cut a board off, he went and fit it, and he come back and he cut it off. I said, man, what's going on? He said, I'd have cut that board off three times. It's still too short. All right, what I do with my little, uh, there she is. We're going to cut one a little longer this time. I may need to put some spittle on it. It came back out. 
We're going to run it in there the other way. All right. It got a lot of crud on it. It need cleaning. All right. Now we're going to load with a different powder measure. We're going to shoot a little heavier load. We're going from like 20. This is actually around 27, 26 or 27 grains, I think. But this one, Uncle Sasquatch said was 30. We're going to see what happens. Now, one more thing you do, I feel these level full, but you can put you a little mark in there and not fill it all the way to the top. You know, just kind of common sense. <laughs> it's hard for me not to feel it brimming full, though. I'll just tell you. I about need me a little funnel put on that thing. Y'all getting tired of me smearing around doing this? We're gonna load this and I won't bore y'all with no more loading much. I could have told y'all about Larry Reese's deer. Mr. Larry Reese comments on my videos, y'all, and he's pretty entertaining. If you ever see where he comments, you want to read his comments. He said that somebody talked him into getting one of them big rifles with a big scope on it, said one of them big alt sixes, and said he took it and said, man, he ain't never hunted with nothing like that before in his life. Said he got down there in the woods and he said he looked at man there's the biggest deer you ever seen in your life he said bloom said man after about 15 minutes of him rubbing his shoulders and groaning and moaning about how that thing kicked him like a mule <laughs> he said he went out there <laughs> he said little old deer said he wasn't big enough said he folded it up put it in his pocket <laughs> He said, though, he knew he was in trouble when that big giant tree, he, <laughs> he was, that deer was standing by, was swaying in the wind, it was a little old sapping. <laughs> he said, them big scopes wasn't all they cracked up to be. But he said he knew he was in trouble when he had to wipe the milk off its mouth so he skinned it. <laughs> Mr. Larry, I had to tell that known you. I really appreciated that comment. That was a good story. I figured everybody that didn't get to read it on my comments would like to hear it. <laughs> Let's shoot this musket a few more times, y'all. We might ought to put some powder in the pan, though. We don't want to be going off about half cocked now. And I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and pick that vent. Just for... All right. <laughs> Let's just shoot it three times to see what we got here. Okay, let's go down there and look at them three shots, see how they did. Well, I didn't come down here and count which shot was which. We shot all three and then come look, so one of them flew way over here. Now, y'all, I could have pulled out, but I don't know why. All of them are consistently lower than the other ones, so... You would think with hotter, more load, more powder moving faster that it wouldn't drop as much. 
anyway, we've shot this a few times, y'all. We get to shoot the old black powder. I just wanted to, to do a little shooting. We are probably fixing to do some squirrel hunting with it here pretty quick. And uh, I wanted to show y'all my T-shirt. And I done got black powder all over. Y'all had to watch me. I'll be wiped it on this new shirt. Y'all know how I am. Uh, but I'm going to go put my stuff up. I'm going to clean my gun good. Now, what I normally do, I ain't going to do no bitch, bunch of cleaning on this video because I don't really know the best way to do it. What I do is usually I pour some warm water down the barrel until it runs out that vent down there pretty clean, and then I swab it out good. So I don't use no whole lot of product. I have used a little soap and water. Somebody said use Murphy's oil soap. I may get a jug of that and try it for long. I've seen people use Simple Green. I am a fan of Simple Green. I love the smell of Simple Green. I like to squirt that stuff all in my truck. So we may try it later on. I know they make a lot of products. I've got some black powder, nitro solvent, and different things. Uh, so, But I usually just clean it with some water. I figure it's what the mountain men used. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see y'all next time. Remember the best way to do things the way you like to do it. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time.